take stands, like for instance, uh, the war on terror, the way it affected the Muslim world, the way Islamophobia has spread in the Western world, uh, and uh, the way the Muslims are treated uh, because of confusing, in, in deliberately, I would say del deliberately, uh, what were political struggles were converted into almost as if they were, the reason was religion behind these struggles. And so um, any crime committed by a Muslim was immediately the whole 1.3 billion Muslims were blamed for the crime. And this was reflected in this Christchurch killing where, uh, where a man brazenly, a terrorist, filmed shooting innocent women and children and uh, innocent people in a mosque and then, and then wasn't, didn't regret it. And this is because of the Islamophobia which has, especially since 9-11, has spread. And so we, we in the Muslim world have been watching you take stands, speak out for, for what were causes affecting the Muslims. Uh, and of course, uh, Prime Minister, we um, have been watching your your stand against corruption. You have presented me a book on corruption, which I look forward to reading. Uh, but uh, my party started uh, uh, a campaign 22 years ago against corruption. We actually believe that countries are not poor. Corruption makes them poor. Corruption is what destroys state institutions. Corruption is what takes away money which should be spent on human beings, it's, it takes away that money and it is siphoned off by corrupt elites, money laundered abroad, uh, and, and therefore they impoverish the country by destroying state institutions and diverting money from human development. And I know that you came back, uh, 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 one of the most remarkable comebacks, uh, you came as a, as a prime minister to combat uh, corruption, so we admire you for that too. So again, uh, Prime Minister, I welcome you again to Pakistan and um, I just want to say how honored we feel. Mr. Prime Minister, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, I am so very glad to renew our friendship, which is a very long friendship, and to come back to Pakistan to join in the celebration of your National Day. We have been very well received by the Prime Minister as well as the Government of Pakistan and we have had bilateral discussions on very substantial issues affecting Pakistan and Malaysia and also the rest of the world <coughs> in particular the Muslim world. We have identified many areas where we can enhance our relationship with Pakistan to the betterment of both our countries. No doubt that if we increase our trade with each other, we will have benefited much in growing our economies. Today, Everyone is focused on growing the economy. It is necessary that we have some wealth of our own in order to be able to function well as nations and also as players in the international forum. We believe that trade between us will increase because we now have uh, outline the measures that we should take in order to improve our trade. We need to identify what you can sell to us and what we can sell to you. We need to know the laws and rules and uh, practices in our two countries so that we are familiar with them and where possible we should commonize the laws so that our traders and your traders would find it comfortable to do business between our two countries. We also talk about the uh, possibility of uh, foreign direct investment uh, for Pakistan to invest in Malaysia and for Malaysia to invest 
in Pakistan in certain areas, including, of course, power generation and the like. And I think uh, the, this will be beneficial again to both countries' economic growth. We are very concerned about corruption. As the Prime Minister said just now, it's not that we are poor, it is corruption which makes us poor. Everything costs more when there is corruption. You have to pay a certain amount to get a certain job done. So the cost will always be higher. And sometimes, of course, money is stolen by officials and the like, and this has to be stopped. We, when we came back, it is with the idea of con combating corruption in Malaysia, which was rampant during the last regime. And then I think we can exchange information on how to combat corruption within our two countries, in our two countries. We, we think that uh, there is uh, some scope for extending our cooperation between other Muslim countries. Uh, we noted that uh, today there is not a single Muslim country which is uh, considered as developed. Actually, Malaysia had planned to become a developed country by the year 2020, but unfortunately, changes in the government has rendered that impossible to achieve. But we still have this target to become a developed country by the year 2025. But we hope that it is not confined only to Malaysia. Other Muslim countries must also strive to develop themselves so as to be at par with the developed countries of the world. We notice that today there is a very much thing of fear and uh, enmity towards the Muslim. Uh, that was why these uh, 50 Muslims were killed and I believe three of them were from Pakistan. Nine. Five. Nine, five. Nine of them. Huh? Nine. Nine from Pakistan and three from Malaysia. And this has happened because uh, of this feeling of hatred that is generated by the press, for example, and also other, other people. We need to learn how to handle this. It's not always by fighting back that we can win. Uh, Malaysia's experience is about winning the hearts and minds of people, getting them win from this idea that the only way to react is to seek revenge and kill. That only invites uh, the same action to be taken against us. We need to find other ways of uh, uh, combating this Islamophobia. And I think uh, Pakistan and Malaysia understands this issue. At least in my talks with Prime Minister, we always discuss about uh, terrorism. And I think we can cooperate in this area so that there will be better improvement, improvement in the perception of Muslims in the world. Fighting back uh, does not always mean killing each other. There are other ways that we can do in order to reduce this uh, atmosphere of fear and anger and hatred towards the Muslim. So this visit has been very useful because we discussed very many issues which we can deal together to our advantage. So I would like to see how much I appreciate the uh, time and uh, opportunities uh, offered during this visit of mine, which is uh, only for two nights, but uh, which will enable us to understand each other much better and to understand the way we do business so that we can improve our, our, our economy through better trade and better investment between our two countries.
I thank you. RTM, Malaysia's national TV station. Um, during your last visit to Malaysia in November, you have stated that you really endorse uh, the leadership of our Prime Minister and uh, it inspires you in order for you to reform your country. So I would like to know um, what Malaysia can do. Thank you. What Malaysia can do and um, what, does, what role does Malaysia pay to fulfill uh, your aspiration in reforming Pakistan? Thank you. Look, uh in the Muslim world, in the Muslim world only the two people who stand out, two leaders who stand out, who actually transform the societies. The, the, uh, the one we all, in the entire Muslim world, we recognize is uh, your Prime Minister. And we watched as Malaysia was transformed and we watched uh, how it became uh, how the standard of living per capita income, how it went up. Uh, and of course, Pakistani labor started going to Malaysia. So job, there were jobs created so that labor from Pakistan was going to Malaysia. The other country where, uh, uh, where there was a dramatic change was Turkey. During uh, uh, President, uh, now then Prime Minister, Erdogan, he, we saw the change in, in Turkey and we saw the per capita incomes going up and, uh, and the GDP going up. So for us, these are the two examples uh, where uh, through statesmanship, change took place in the societies. And so therefore, we, I've been um, this morning having chat with, the, with, with your Prime Minister and discussing how in different situations, how did they react in, uh, during the 98 uh, uh, South Asian crisis, the economic crisis that took place, Malaysia was the only one which, uh, which did things its own way and because of the leadership of uh, 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 the Prime Minister, they managed to get out, the, out of the crisis through homegrown solutions. So anyway, uh, we discussed a lot and therefore we in Pakistan do face a difficult economic situation right now. And uh, it was very interesting talking to your Prime Minister, the sort of things we need to do to get out of it. Thank you very much. Shumaila Ali from APP. Uh, sir, my question is uh, to the Malaysian Prime Minister. Uh, sir, as the 21st century is witnessing economy-driven driven politics, so what are the areas in which Pakistan and Malaysia are cooperating and what are the future prospects? And uh, to Mr. Imran Khan, um, do you think that there is a need to collaborate in tourism sector with Malaysia? Thank you. In wanting to grow the economy of a country, it is useful to identify models. In the case of Malaysia, of course, we look at Japan and many Eastern countries as models. And we have benefited by adopting some of the strategies and policies uh, adopted by them. So perhaps uh, the, we, having achieved some degree of success, maybe it is also useful for us to discuss our strategies with Pakistan in case they are relevant to the growth of the economy of Pakistan. We, we, have, uh, we have discussed uh, various ways Malaysia, uh, uh, Malaysia went up and one of the reasons was uh, the uh, Prime Minister mentioned foreign direct investment and technology transfer. So we are actually already uh, uh, we are thinking on those lines. We have been, since we've been, uh, our government has come in, we have been discussing ways of getting foreign direct investment in Pakistan and technology transfer. Uh, the, the one area where we, uh, we think we, will, we can get very quick returns is learning from uh, Malaysia's uh, 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 experience in tourism. Because Malaysia, from what we were told, 
uh, generates almost $22 billion from tourism. And Pakistan, uh, with vast resources, generates nothing from tourism. So uh, we are going, we have already discussed how we can uh, seek help from uh, Malaysia about tourism, how, how to develop our tourism industry. Come to the end of the press conference. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Thank you, sir. آپ کو بتاتے چلیں کہ پاکستان اور ملائشہ کے وزراء آزم کی نیوز کانفرنس جاری تھی ڈاکٹر مہاتیر محمد نے کہا کہ ہماری باتشت میں مسلم ممالک کہاں موضوع رہے آج ہر ملک معیشت کی بہتری کے لئے کوشہ ہیں مجھے یقین ہے کہ پاکستان کے ساتھ ہماری تجارت میں اضافہ ہوگا انہوں نے کہا کہ ہمیں دیکھنا ہوگا کہ ہم آپ کو اور آپ ہمیں کیا فروغ کر سکتے ہیں کاروباری حضرات ایک دوسرے سے تجارت میں دلچسپی لے رہے ہیں اسی انداز سے دونوں ممالک کی معیشت ترقی کر سکتی ہے عمران خان نے ٹھیک کہا کہ کرپشن ہمیں غریب بناتی ہے بس آوقات کرپٹ حکام کی وجہ سے کرپشن ہوتی ہے